Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Mata and I'm going to discuss again the updates in COVID-19. Today is March 1, 2020 and so far there's no clear uh, medicines for the COVID and we can still uh, read some articles of deaths that are still increasing uh, in different countries. So the focus here is what could be the management of COVID-19. Uh, there have been some research on antivirals and of course there are some vaccines uh, but I would like to highlight in my topic again is the need for research or focus on anti-inflammatories because the biggest question that we would like to answer is why are the kids doesn't develop severe uh, cases so we have read that there are even a day old or a month old baby that was discharged with positive with COVID-19 but there were no severe symptoms in comparison to other patients like the older ones who develop severe respiratory distress syndrome. So what could be the answer there? The hypothesis that I'm standing upon is that the newborns doesn't have antibodies. So because they don't have the antibodies for a coronavirus, uh, they don't react, uh, overly react when the COVID-19 comes in. Because there are seven coronaviruses that we know. The, the first one is the SARS, then MERS-CoV, then the COVID-19. But of course, there are other four coronaviruses that are present which, the, which are not severe, doesn't give severe illnesses, but just like flu types of uh, uh, illnesses. Now, the theory could be that older, older people, like young professionals going to adults, because of their constant uh, travels, they could have been already exposed to the ordinary coronavirus flu, which caused the development of some antibodies. And when the COVID-19 comes in, there will be a reaction in the lungs, causing severe inflammation and causing death. In comparison to the kids or the young ones who haven't been exposed to the other coronavirus flu viruses. So it could be a, an angle that we could uh, observe uh, could be the reason why some of these coronavirus uh, patients presently are not severe and the reason why the others are severe. Now, I would like to cite to you an example, uh, the opto autopsy report of a, a COVID-19 patient uh, to prove my point that the main a cause of death in a COVID-19 patient is the overreaction of the antibodies. Therefore, the medicine that we need really is aside from an antivirus, of course, aside from developing a vaccine, but we also need to focus on an anti-inflammatory. Let me show to you uh, this autopsy report. Here is a case report from the Lancet Respiratory Medicine titled Pathological Findings of COVID-19 Associated with Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. It's dated February 18, uh, 2020. Uh, he's a patient, 50-year-old, uh, was admitted with fever uh, in the fever clinic on January 21, 2020, with symptoms of fever, chills, cough, fatigue, and shortness of breath. He reported a travel history at Wuhan on January 18, 8 to 12, and that he had initial symptoms of mild chills and dry cough on January 14. That was the first day of illness, but did not seek a doctor for about a week until January 21. So the chest x ray showed multiple patchy shadows in both lungs, and a throat swab was done, uh, which showed to be positive for COVID-19. Uh, so the peripheral blood was, uh, was done, uh, biopsy was done, and their findings was 
it said that our results imply that overactivation of T cells manifested by the increased TH17 and a high cytotoxicity of the CD8 T cells accounts for, in part, the severe immune injury in this patient. So, there's a severe immune injury, meaning overreaction of the antibodies that causes the injury to the tissues of the lungs. So, their conclusion and their suggestion is that although corticosteroid treatment is not routinely recommended to be used for SARS-CoV-2 pneumonia, According to our pathological findings of pulmonary edema and hyaline membrane formation, timely and appropriate use of corticosteroids together with ventilator support should be considered for the severe patients to prevent ARDS development. Okay, uh, the point is this. We have to focus on the correct anti-inflammatory. I do believe that there are already medicines available that you could give a particular severe COVID patient that you could prevent the respiratory distress. One of those mentioned in the autopsy, which is, was suggested by the pathologist, is the steroids, corticosteroids. I know corticosteroids, some are ag uh, in agreement with that, some are not. But... My point is, don't discard it. You have to test it and you have to find out uh, what's the benefit of giving a steroid in a COVID patient. Now, aside from steroids, we could also think of other anti-inflammatories. Thal thalidomide is one. There are some research of that. And of course, the possibility that an IVIG or the intravenous immune globulin can decrease the reaction of the antibodies in COVID-19 and we are looking for research on that as well. So therefore, I just want to suggest to those uh, who are focusing on the management of COVID-19, please don't forget the use of anti-inflammatories in your research, not only on focusing on antivirals or the vaccine, but of course, focus also on anti-inflammatories so that the world will know that uh, we can manage and prevent the deaths because if we can prevent the deaths in COVID-19, even if it becomes pandemic, as long as we can prevent severity, as, as long as we can, we can prevent deaths, then the panic will decrease and it's just going to be listed as one of the common diseases in this world. There are so many co diseases in this world, but because we have a good management, good treatment, then we don't worry and we can continue on with our life. So again, I would like to highlight in the findings of this autopsy, please don't forget research on anti-inflammatories uh, for COVID-19. With this, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for listening.